Whoopi Goldberg, and welcome to the Fun Ideas Podcast. Now, the outrageous brand of humor shown here comes to us from a time when racial and ethnic differences were caricatured in the name of entertainment. Now, while humor may have been the intent of such caricatures, they also had the effect of revealing society's unfair and hurtful representations of people of color, women, and ethnic groups. Now, these prejudices were wrong then, and they are certainly wrong today. Fun Ideas Productions presents the Fun Ideas Podcast. Hi, this is Mark Arnold, and welcome to Fun Ideas Podcast number 30. Alvin! The story of Ross Bagdasarian Sr. Liberty Records format films and The Alvin Show is out. Order your hardback, paperback, and ebook copies today on Amazon and at BearManorMedia.com. A reminder that I am scheduled to be on Stu's show live on April 22nd discussing this very book, and I also appeared recently on Phil Hall's online movie show to discuss it as well. Currently, I'm at work on the Total Television Scrapbook, and I'll give more details about where that is going very soon. Our guest today is a fan of Benny Hill, Wax Museums, Horror Films, Monty Python, Italians, Bobby Valley, Tony Curtis, Vincent Price, Jerry Lewis, Porn, New York City, New Jersey, Chiller, Ernest Borgnine, Good Times, Gene Hackman, Liberace, Rod Steiger, W.C. Fields, John Carpenter, Al Goldstein, Vic Tabak, Elvis, Abba, R. Bud Dwyer, Cocaine, Camp, and Dick Miller. Here he is, Anthony from Facebook. So on the phone, I have Anthony from Facebook. And how are you today? Terrific. <laughs> so um, I know about all your outrageous <laughs> postings on Facebook, you know, from Sherman Helmsley to <laughs> R. Bud Dwyer to uh, Wax Museums. But yet you want to talk about the Invisible Man. Okay. <laughs> so there's, there's a zillion subjects. First of all, it's great to talk. There's a zillion subjects <laughs> I, I could talk about. But seeing like they want to bring back the Invisible Man, mm-hmm. and there was this new. I don't know. They they got nothing else to do anymore. So there's sequels, prequels, remakes, new <laughs> universes, knockoffs, the rip imitations. Let's go back to my favorite of the classic Universal horrors, The Invisible Man. This really goes to childhood favorite. I used to watch this movie nonstop as a kid, and I always wondered about the magic. Mm-hmm. And it all comes down to Claude Rains. Yes. And when I was a kid, I used to go down the street and rent this movie with a dollar, one oh six dollar and six cents a night. <laughs> go back up the hill, and I would just, I somehow I was able to record the audio off this movie onto a, a Maxell tape. Oh wow. <laughs> and then listen to it. While I walked around on my Walkman, simply because this has one of the greatest performances, vocal performances ever. Yes. It was so spellbinding, and it just held my attention. <laughs> Every overall intense nanosecond, it, it, it really is a miracle to this day. It's almost 100 years old, but it, it's still the greatest Invisible Man movie, yes. in my humble opinion. I agree. And to this day, they're always trying to remake it or do some variation <laughs> on the subject, and they always miss the mark. <laughs> Here you have this lean, mean son of a bitch of a movie, <laughs> and it just it's it still it still captivates me. And to this day, anything with Claude fucking rains, yes. it's, it's, you gotta watch it. Yes. Even close your eyes, and you can hear the Invisible Man again. <laughs> and. It's it's true. He had like um, a stammer or something like that, or he definitely had a Cockney accent or something. That's what I've heard, right? Yes, and just <laughs> you can watch that movie again and again and again, and just it just never gets old. And notice how he, it's the movie is not special effects, right? And this is where everything that's FX oriented misses the mark. You cannot just rest a movie on great special effects. You must have something else. Take Let's, let's make the special effects the silver platter, the great special effects. It's a silver platter. You must put something on top of it, whether it's great writing or great acting or, uh, or, or absolute batshit crazy insanity. 
you must put something on top of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and to just have, inv- you know, special effects, it's not enough. I don't care how good the effects are. You must have a story or characters. You, there has to be something. Actually, I don't even remember that many special effects. I think about the only time is when he's riding the bicycle that was kind of interesting. I haven't seen the film in a while, but, you know, is that correct, or is there other effects other than just disappearing or reappearing? Well, first, first, the, the stupid old bitch, Uno Connor, doesn't leave him alone. He's just trying to have a meal in, the, in, in, in one of the rooms, and slowly you see him take off the bandages, <laughs> drop his trowel, take off the goggles, and everyone in this little hamlet goes batshit crazy and it's truly remarkable in this in everything is computer generated today, but these effects still hold up oh yeah now do, who do you attribute that to would it be james whale the director or would it be uh is there another person that was good on special effects in that particular film it's not, yeah, of course remarkable effects team but it's also james whale so James Whale means this is a very gay, campy movie, <laughs> and he milks the shit out of it. Yes. It, okay, there's a storm outside, but this is no ordinary storm. This is screeching winds. It's like the worst hurricane on Earth. And here comes this <laughs> this flaming mad scientist. And to, <laughs> and to this day, his entrance is so... <laughs> Action-packed. It gets straight to the subject. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I want a room for the night. Send me some food. Leave me alone and close the door. Send me some mustard. <laughs> He's so nasty at it. Right away, Sam. Right away. Fucking <laughs> oh, bitch. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I took monocane? Monocane. I, tr- I experimented with it for the benefit of mankind, and now it's had an adverse effect. I'm losing my fucking mind. I just want a simple meal. There has to be a way back. God knows there's a way back. And you're just glor- you're just reveling in this guy's megalomania. He thinks like he looks at the moon at one point. Even the moon is frightened of me. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Let's talk about Whale for a bit. I mean, so Whale did Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, The Old Dark House, and then later um, uh, uh, Showboat, you know, and probably some other films. But, you know, do you think this Invisible Man is his best film or it's just good camp? I think his greatest film and the greatest American horror movie is Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, but this, The Invisible Man, is my favorite. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite of his films. Yeah. Simply, it's just so bizarre, <laughs> and I don't think I don't think H.G. Wells liked it. <laughs> I don't think he liked it. That's true. H.G. <laughs> Wells is still alive. Yeah. You know? I mean, a little background. I did look it up. H.G. Wells wrote The Invisible Man back in 1897, but yes, he was still alive in 1933 when this film version came out. So. <laughs> I don't think he liked any of the adaptations. I don't know. He didn't even like the the Wells War of the World broadcast. He was just I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> But, you know, if you go through all The Invisible Man, and I've forgotten all this, even though I own all the films, it's like, of all the universal horrors, this one probably has the bizarrest series, if you even could call it that, of continuity. I mean, you follow The Invisible Man, which is a pretty straightforward film. I mean, it's campy and everything. But then the next one is Invisible Man Returns, which is kind of a completely different film, I would think. Yeah, they, they, you, you, first of all, they're all adorable, but yeah. you'll notice the universal horror, they, they watered it down. Yeah. As the 30s went into the 40s, they watered everything down. Yeah. Actors went away, they brought in, they were trying to, they were doing experiments, they were combining yeah. uh, combining monsters, they brought in Lou Costello and right. what have it. Yeah. They, they, were, they were beating the horse to death. And they're, just, they're all enjoyable, but you yeah. notice that the early '30s is really, they're really the, the the heyday when when they were really the most successful. Yeah, it's almost like they should have gotten a sequel out, you know, like 
right after or something, you know, just <laughs> because, you know, then it goes into Invisible Woman, which I remember was really kind of silly, and then Invisible Agent, which doesn't even make sense in the whole timeline. <laughs> you know? the, the, I think the best one is the one with Vinnie Price. <laughs> yes. Another gay voice. Yes. Another villain with a gay thing voice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best one, mm-hmm. I would say. But then, then, then it just... I didn't even, I didn't, I haven't even seen the other ones. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of other invisible movies, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, you know, then you know, I, I, you know, I wrote all this down so to help you out here. It's like, you know, you have to. Finally, they did the Abbott Costello meet Frankenstein, and of course, Vincent Price reprises the Invisible Man role briefly as the punchline, not to give it away. Spoiler alert! But then they do Abbott and Costello meet the Invisible Man, but don't use Vincent Price's voice. <laughs> Right, right, yeah. right. Well, well, he's—I love his cameo in uh, *Me Frankenstein*. That's yes. that's yes. that's cute. Yes, yes. <laughs> but the, the, the original *The Invisible Man* is just so crazy. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if this was like on um, the the precipice of the censors taking over. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it was a pre-code movie, but stuff happens in this movie that's pretty. Pretty gruesome for the ever. I mean, a train jumps the goddamn tracks. He knocks over a baby carriage. Yeah. He sends a guy flying off a cliff in a car. I mean, pretty, pretty ghastly. Yeah, I think it was pre Hayes Code because I think Hayes Code took effect in 34 and this is 33. So, yeah, they still had a lot of liberties and stuff like that to do whatever they wanted. And Whale certainly took advantage of that in the earlier films. So. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, and it just really captivated me. To this day, it just, I don't know, just, it's pretty, pretty wild stuff. <laughs> now, Have you seen any other, oh, you know, the, another great invisible monster is the the monster from the id in for, Forbidden Planet. Oh, I that's think right. That's yeah. a, that's, but you see it in the end. It's pretty magnificent. Mm-hmm. Now, why do you think an invisible character in, in a certain sense, I guess it is supposed to be scary, but the way they usually present it, it's not. So it's like if you think of all the different characters, Dracula, Frankenstein, whatever, uh, Frankenstein's monster, you know, the mummy, you know, they all kind of are lumbering around and coming after you, and you can see them, and then Invisible Man, you know, the only big shtick is being invisible, but he doesn't really do anything to anybody per se. <laughs> Yeah, yeah and that would, and it, it leaves itself open to be parodied. Yeah. Parodied, and and who did it better? <laughs> no one did it better than Ed Begley Jr. Yes, yeah, so I was gonna bring that up one eventually. Of the greatest movies ever made. Yeah. That's another childhood favorite. Amazon Women on the Moon. Everybody should own it. Yes. Ed yeah. Begley Jr. thinks he's invisible, but he's not. So right. he takes his clothes off and he's running around, and the constable <laughs> covers his dick with his cap. <laughs> I mean, right away, I mean, it, it started with Young Frankenstein, but yeah. these were guys, and now, you know, Joe Dante, they knew, I don't know who directed that segment, but they knew how to, yeah. how to parody you know, the universal horror. Yeah, I'm, and I'm glad they did take that choice and actually do it in black and white and, and you know, take a cue from Young Frankenstein, because they could have just blown it and just done a like a typical SNL skit, and you'd go, what the fuck? You know, it's like, what? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it, it the... the what I remember most about James Whale is how he doesn't really want to scare us. Yeah. If if he gets too close to horror, he wants to rush in the comedy and the charm right away. Yeah. Like in Bride of Frankenstein, you'll see the monster, but then you see Uno Connor doing her <laughs> shtick and screaming to high heaven. <laughs> it's as if it's 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 that, like he wasn't really. I don't know. These are very campy movies at heart. Yeah. He like he wasn't. He's not like Todd Browning, where the horror is pretty serious. Right. This is, I, I, like, at the center of it is really a lot of humor. Yeah. In his horror movies, and I'm not sure why they stopped. I think he got tired of horror movies, but I I wish he would have went on with yeah. more horror movies. But unfortunately, one, after the after that run of films, like his career fell apart. Yeah. Well, I mean, he if you see a, if I you mean, see Gods and Monsters, I don't know how believable it is completely, but, I mean, it's like he kind of just fell out of favor and then kind of died alone in a swimming pool, as it were, so, you know. Well, I mean, 
mean, it is true. There's a lot of him in those in those horror movies. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of his struggles, you know. Uh, I, there's a lot of his sensibility and his personality in those movies. Yeah. And I think Bride of Frankenstein, I mean, Frankenstein is European, but Bride of Frankenstein is so uniquely American. What he does with the entire story, nothing. Mary Shelley wrote none, none of that. It's strictly from James Whale's imagination. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's one of the greatest sequels ever. It's pretty amazing. But then you have the gayest character right. in history, Ernest Thessinger. Yeah. That's another episode. It's just well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like, that's the one thing that is amazing about Wales ca- is his casting, his films, his casting, you know, besides Una O'Connor screaming to high heavens, just camping it up, you know, you got in both Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein, it's alive, it's alive! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's amazing how they snuck all the gay humor in these yes. movies. Mm-hmm. They really are subversive. Yeah. It's re- really, it's really uh, stunning yeah. to this day. And you know, also with these actors that I'm talking about, you know, they their faces. You know, you don't have actors with faces like that. I mean, you know, I, I don't know how to say it. Pointed nose, large nostrils. You know, just devious, arching eyebrows. I mean, the only thing I could think of that kind of comes close is, you know, like Hal Roach's. Uh, March of the Wooden Soldiers with, you know, you know, you know, where you get like actors that are like camping it up over the top or something like that. Yeah, I mean, we really don't have movie stars anymore. It's really sad. They, they, they don't have personalities. Do you hear anybody impersonating like Tom Hanks? Yeah. No, they, they, <laughs> they, they, they don't. They don't have. First of all, there's no draw. The only star we have left, really, there's the. The Rock, and that's a joke. <laughs> and, and and Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is really the last person in which just the name alone could get uh, uh, um, theater uh, patrons in the seats. Right. <laughs> but we don't have anybody left to, you know, there's just no more. Yeah, I was just back listening. Then, <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, back then they had faces. We had faces. We had true stars. It's... <laughs> It's really sad. Yeah, I was just listening to your uh, podcast appearance on Phil Hall's uh, online movie show with Tony Curtis, and you were saying kind of the same thing. And it's like, you know, and then, you know, Tony Curtis kind of destroyed his career, but he was still Tony Curtis. You know, it didn't matter. You know, and he, and I met him once, and even then, he was still Tony Curtis, even though you go, he hasn't made a good movie in 30 years. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he was like a male version of Norma Desmond. Mm-hmm. And there's he's still a star in his mind. Yes. To his last breath, he is Tony Curtis. <laughs> Everybody bow. I bang Marilyn Monroe. Right. Yes, I tasted a pussy. It was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Great impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, All right, like do, do t- uh, this sounds like Gilbert Godfrey's podcast. Let's go, you know, do Tony Curtis meeting Claude Rains. <laughs> <laughs> no, who, the hell are, who the hell are you? What are you doing? I'm, I'm experimenting. Wait, they're almost the same person. Wait a minute, you son of a bitch. I'm Tony Curtis. I was in Houdini. I was in the Some Like It Hot. I'm in the Boston Strangler. You're just a guy in this German English village. You're running around. You don't even have the balls to even show your face. <laughs> Me, Bernie Schwartz from the Bronx. I'm the most handsome man ever. You know? <laughs> go away, damn you. You <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm going to go hang out with Bogey now. <laughs> But it is true what you said about Claude Rains. I will say that you know it's like every movie you see, like Lost World or uh, which which of the Bible films was he in? The Greatest Story Ever Told, or you know anything oh that God. he was in. You know it's like it's still I'm Claude Rains, and <laughs> you know <laughs> and yes, I and was the Invisible Man. <laughs> Don't forget. <And laughs> this was a generation of actors that was really they never forgot the stage. Yeah. You know, they are they are speaking to the balcony. They are, you know, they're, they're, they're if they're being over the top, is that 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 that's how they were? That's how they cut their teeth mm-hmm. on the on the stage. And then you 
know, after Brenda, the entire craft of acting just changed tremendously. But it's not, it's lovely to look at the old school actor. I mean, this goes, mm -hmm. look at John Barrymore's uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll. Mm -hmm. that, that, that just, that's totally, it's a totally different type of acting. <laughs> I miss, I miss that kind of acting. You know, and I guess people think it's over the top, but, you know, the problem with nowadays, in my opinion, is like there's this relative sameness. Like, um, nowadays, you know, they cast celebrities to do cartoon voices for Disney and all the other exactly. animated features, but they all sound like the same woman or the same man. There's no nothing distinctive, and they don't give any credits to it on the box or anything, and you have to wait till the closing credits to go, oh, that's who that was. Kristen Wiig, I don't care. You know, it's like... <laughs> I mean, it, it, that is such... It, they are sabotaging the entire... I mean, whatever happened to voice actors? Yeah. I mean, that's an art in itself. Now they have to use, you know, actors and actresses that, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just crazy. You go. You want to find the perfect voice for the character, not a, not a star. It's it's not important that it's a star. Yeah. I don't know, but it's it's, it's getting worse and worse. <laughs> do you, but do you think um, it was Claude Rain's voice that sold it to put it put him in the Invisible Man? Oh, absolutely. Okay. You just couldn't have some. I mean, he makes that character ten times more menacing. Yeah. With his voice, with with his voice alone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, th there was other Invisible Man movies done later, like there was a TV series with David McCallum in the 70s, which actually I thought was quite impressive for its time. I haven't really seen it since. What, what is your thoughts about things like that? Oh, I never saw it. My mom took me to see the Chevy Chase atrocity. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that's another that's another episode. I mean, that was the beginning of the end of John Carpenter. <laughs> he had to do an Invisible Man movie with fucking Chevy Chase. Yeah. <laughs> now, now the the effects are great, right? Yeah, the effects yeah. are great, but that's it. But that's it. Yeah. I mean, the 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 rest of the movie is a, is a nothing. Mm-hmm. And who wants to see Chevy Chase? You know, fucking Daryl Hand. That's sad. <laughs> we don't want to see that. <laughs> I'm always amazed on actors like Chevy Chase. I will say this, you know, it's like, what, he made like 50 films and maybe two are good, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, Chevy Chase, I mean, he owned the 80s. Yeah. And in the beginning, it was nothing but trouble after nothing but trouble. <laughs> yes. But, I mean, well, I would go to Christmas these things. Vacation. I would go to these things for, you know, it's like, oh, Modern Problems, that sounds promising, that sounds fun. Ah! You know, and then I stopped seeing him, and then I found out later, like, oh, Vacation's not too bad, but I did, I never saw it in the theater because I had already given up on him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, well that, that was just a different, and now he's so lost, Chevy Chase. It's yeah. pretty sad. He's making another movie with Rich, Richard Dreyfuss. I'm like, who the fuck paid for this movie? It's so sad. <laughs> he doesn't know where he is, who he is, and they're making Chevy Chase do more movies. <laughs> I don't know, but back then, I mean, the eighties, the eighties were really the last golden age of funny films. We don't even have comedy films, and really, what's funny nowadays? You know, yeah. I always used to go to the movies nonstop. Last year was the first year in my life in which I, I didn't, I didn't even go to the movies. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm too busy buying Blu-rays of great movies from the past. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, like The Invisible Man. I mean. There's just, it's getting worse and worse, and the price is, it's more and more expensive. I just don't have any, I don't have any reason to go to the movies. Yeah. It's just, it's crazy. Well, it's all sequels and remakes. I mean, it's like, if it isn't a Marvel comic superhero, it's, you know, uh, fill in the blank part 12, you know, it's like... <laughs> Yeah. And these superheroes have taken over everything. I, I don't know. And now they hide it. They don't call something like Rocky 12. They'll call it Creed or something to get away with being a, a tenth go-round sequel or something like that. Yeah. So uh, well, how old are you? I'm 40. I'm 52. So. Okay. So you grew up just in time. I tell yeah. everybody, if you were born in 1980 or before... Yeah. You saw you saw like the beginning of the end. You saw the last golden ages. Yeah. Of of the movies. Yes. Because I in the mid the mid nineties, you can see style and substance in general going in two different directions. Yeah. And it's just getting worse into to that it's to to this moment. I mean, there's still there's still great stuff, but it's few and far between. Right. 
Well, I, I always tell people this. It's like, you know, move, you know, now I sound like an old man when I tell people, you know, guys in their 20s, it's like, what was Star Wars like in 1977? And I say, well, there was long lines, and all my friends saw it in the theater about 30, 40 times. And it's like, really? Why would they do that? Because this stuff wasn't on home video. You couldn't just pop it onto your TV and stream it or whatever exactly. or buy a DVD. It's like... I- yeah. I know that there wasn't it, the audiences were much better. The movies were much better. There weren't twenty fucking trailers before the movie. Right. We could, you know, we could go on and on. It was, it was, it was a far better time to go to to go out. Now it's not even worth going out. Right. But I remember, like Raiders of the Lost Ark. I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, and Raiders of the Lost Ark played in this one theater for a year and a half. And I went wow. to see it like three times during that period. You know, I saw it when it came out, and then it's like a year later, it's like it was still out, and so eh, I'll go see it again. And then wow, <laughs> six months later, they say oh. last week, and they go, "Oh, it's going out of the theater. I'll see it again." <laughs> like, and, and and you know, you and I are not just because we're you know we're getting older. Yeah. You know, we're we're not the, the old joke. Ah, the music today sucks. It's not it's not because we're older. Yeah. It's because it sucks. Yeah. Oh, I talk to people. Scientific fact: It sucks. <laughs> I talk to people that are in their twenties, and then, and yeah, they'll listen to the Beatles, they'll listen to the Stones, and they go, "Yeah, the stuff now is crap. Who wants to see Taylor Swift talking about her stupid boyfriend?" You know, it's like <laughs> absolute bullshit. <laughs> and you know, it's it's sad because they they minced and diced people's memories and attention spans, so people have no idea who Humpy Bogart is. Yeah. You know who the Marx Brothers are. Yeah. Soon they won't even care about the Beatles. Yeah. And I'm just I'm so thankful that I know who they were. I knew who, yes. who they were when I was a kid. You and know, we had a much better, much better entertainment. And I and I have to contend myself with that too because it's like, you know, this isn't very far back, but it's like, you know, I was just talking with someone when Jerry Lewis died. I go, oh, Jerry Lewis died, and the person I was talking to who was a lot younger. Said, who? Oh and I God. said, Nutty Professor? Uh, you mean with Eddie Murphy? No. <laughs> um, oh. uh, um, and I started naming other things, and I said, uh, The Telethon? And they go, Oh, yeah. And it's like, Geez, that's all you know him from. <laughs> it's The oh. Telethon. Out, out, out. <laughs> How do those people walk the planet? I mean, <laughs> they're like anything before 1990. They just, they, they, don't, they don't care about it. No. And that's kind of like my cutoff now. Now it's like, you know, my prime period of uh, looking at things historically or trying to discover new things is anything that came out between, like, 1930 and 1990. And, you know, I'll go into even right. to the silent movie era and stuff like that. But I love, like, the early sound era until, like, the late 80s and then early 90s. And then it's like, it, like, it's like there's this, like, distinct cutoff. I even remember it. It's like, uh, even though they made a comeback, uh, 1990 was the year. No more vinyl records. We're done. It's all through. You have to buy CDs or something else. You know, it's like, but you're not going to buy a vinyl record anymore. And now people are paying 40 bucks for a stupid album. You know, it's like, what's that? Yeah, I remember going to the movies at least once a week. Yeah. And then I saw this movie. It was called Armageddon. And I said, this is the end of the fucking. This is the end of the movies, man. I was so right. I walked out of the movie. <laughs> I walked out. And, and from that point on, it's just. It's just falling apart. <laughs> I heard about this fucking Death Wish remake with goddamn Bruce Willis. It uh. is so abominable. <laughs> he barely moves as a facial muscle. It's just so... Uh, I mean, if you're going to remake, at least put a pulse in the fucking movie. Yeah. But they're just they're just cash grabs. Yeah. Because they know the movies, by remaking a movie, you already it's already sold. Yeah. You don't have to worry about advertising. It's already sold. Right. But if you're going to remake Death Wish, at least do something with it. And, you know? and I'm always the type, you know, and maybe you are too, it's like, when they remake it, can't you have it kind of, at least kind of slightly resemble what went on before, other than the title? <laughs> like, you know, Bruce Willis looks nothing like rugged Charles Bronson at all, you know, it's like... <laughs> exactly! <laughs> you know, and then, you know, you have other things like in comedies, and I mentioned this on another podcast, it's like, uh, Steve Martin basically ruining things like doing Bilko and doing Ugh. Cluzo and it's like stop, Ugh. stop, stop don't you have any respect for Phil Silvers and Peter Sellers? Stop! Motherfucker, <laughs> you greedy motherfuckers, you sold your soul to the devil 
Eddie Murphy. Uh, I mean, oh, I'm old enough to remember when these motherfuckers were funny. Yes. When they actually, they gave a shit. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. You wonder. I mean, you wonder about Robin Williams. Look at the movies he was he was in. Yes. If I was in Night at the Museum too, I'd fucking kill myself. <laughs> Well, I do think is, that, you know, with with Robin Williams, it's like he went back to TV and he said, why the fuck am I on TV again? I, I got away TV. from this. Mork and Mindy, I'm done. You I know? mean, I won a fucking Oscar, man. <laughs> Everybody, I raised millions for the homeless. I, I, I won an Oscar. <laughs> I was in amazing movies. And now I'm in a show on TV that's going nowhere. And people, and now I got this disease. You know, fuck this. Where's my gun? <laughs> oh my god, that's, it's, it's horrible. That's why I say to people, if you get famous, know when to leave. Take the money and run. Yeah. Take the money. Do something else with your life, because believe me, it's gonna end. And Once you know you're set for life, get the fuck out of Hollywood. And you, they'll, they'll eat you alive, especially you, nowadays. Yes, and you you said this, and uh, I think you wrote it on the on Facebook, or you said it somewhere. It's like. Using people like Natalie Wood, you know, if she quit at the end of the 60s, like stuff with Bob and Carol, Ted and Al, or whatever it is, you know, you know, right. you know, she would have been revered, she probably wouldn't have died, and now she would have been just like the old grand dame of the movie saying, I did all this great stuff in the 50s and 60s, and I was a kid, you know, in right, Miracle on right. 34th Street, now she's just, you know, worm, wood, worm food, you know? It's like, I know, you want to you go back to certain people and just say, listen, this is this is the beginning of the end. Just leave right now, <laughs> yes. and you would have had a, you know a much better life. I'm trying to think, like uh, Melanie Griffith. Well, <laughs> she is, stop with body double. That's it. That's it. And just end your career. <laughs> You'll have your sanity. You'll keep your sanity. But no, I gotta make my movie. And she she fucking flipped. <laughs> and I gotta change my face so I can look young. <laughs> oh, I'm a duck. Look at me now. I got a whore daughter in a stupid movie. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Well, we've kind of strayed off Invisible Man, but now we're going to veer a different direction. So you wanted to talk about also um, VHS tapes. Now, why? Why why talk about VHS tapes? I hated that format. I loved beta tapes, and VHS took over the worst tape format ever. Okay, go ahead. (laughs) Well, well, you know, beta beta was better, but the porn companies got behind VHS. Uh, So that's why. VHS. Okay. But you know, I could talk forever about the glory days of VHS. Like, like vinyl, we miss. Yes. The t- you know the tactility to touch. Yes. You can touch the move, or rewind, pause, eject, stick the knife in the fucking machine to get the tape out. <laughs> I I I miss the. But what I miss is how everything's accessible today. Everything yeah. is within reach. Yep. But when I was a kid. <laughs> Tons and tons of movies simply were not available. Yes. And if you wanted to see a movie like The Colossus of Rhodes or A Curse of the Faceless Man, you had to go to the bootlegs. Yes. And there were at the conventions or in the back of a Film Facts or whatever, the, those magazines, there would be companies that were selling bootlegs. So Curse of the Faceless Man was aired in Minneapolis. Somebody recorded it. Mm. And now that tape is being sold. <laughs> so it, it, it wasn't legal, but that was... It, these movies... Because I, well, I grew up, my Bibles were, you know, Michael Weldon's the Psychotronic the, the, oh, yeah. the Encyclopedia. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to see every movie in that book. <laughs> <laughs> right away. Now Nowadays you can. I mean, I think 80% yeah. of that stuff is, uh, is now available if it's on YouTube or streaming or it's on Blu-ray yeah. or DVD. But it... it a lot of that stuff simply wasn't available, and I would just – I was constantly going to Tower and Sam Goody and The Wiz, mm-hmm. and I was – and plus Malton was a major effect on me. I, I would read about movies. I'm like, I miss the thrill of the hunt yes. of searching for movies, mm-hmm. and, you know, like uh, – I'm like the Invisible. No, well, the Invisible Man was available, but movies like the Invisible Agent. Well, the, the sequels, Invisible yeah, the sequels on all of them. Right. Like, like I, you know, Creature from the Black Lagoon, I had seen dozens of times, and I found that, out there were two sequels, right, not one, but right, two. Right, you know. Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, what's I mean, what's this movie? The creature walks again. What they operate on him and try to make him a human being. Holy shit! Yeah. 
And I have to see that movie. And it was or years, it. yeah, it was years. It's like, you know. I it, mean, I would see a still of a movie, and I would get like this raging heart on. Like, what's this movie? The Giant Claw. Look at this fucking marionette <laughs> bird. Yeah. I need it attacks the UN. It attacks. It, it's on top. I need to see this movie right now. <laughs> But it wouldn't be available. Now, but slowly but surely, the tide was turning. Yeah. So I would go to Sam Goodyear Tower, and uh, there would be the budget labels. Mm. I don't know if you remember Good Times oh, yeah. video. <laughs> there was SP mode, and then there was LP. Yeah. And there was SLP, and there was EP speed. Yeah. Now, they would sell these fucking movies for $10, $15. You'd get home. <laughs> And it would be EP speed, and you would have to adjust your tracking. It would be so severe, <laughs> the tracking lines over this very rare movie. <laughs> yes. They must have made some. So, they were thieves. The best you could get. Old, yeah. The best you could get is one, <laughs> one snow line in the t instead of three. <laughs> You'd never get them completely, you know. Or the right. top would be kind of bending over sideways a little bit, you know. And, and you know. I would go out shopping or looking because I never knew if a title was going to come out. Right. So I would have to go back to these stores to see what's new. <laughs> Holy shit, War of the Gargantuas is on tape. Yes. Yes, EP Speed, Full Frame. Mm -hmm. Now that was a major. <laughs> they raped us so bad, man. Oh, yeah. We didn't, when, we, when we grew up, all these movies were pan and scanned. Yeah. I mean, everything was full. We only saw half the movies, but we didn't care. All these movies were chopped to pieces, but yeah. we were still happy to see, like, Invisible Invaders or well, whatever. It's, uh, all the crazy stuff from Japan. It, at least it's a veil. You know, Octoman, what's the movie? Yeah. <laughs> it's like half man, half octopus. <laughs> it's like early Rick Baker, Octoman. Okay, but at least it was available and then when the internet started i was always tr i was trading tapes huh. i would buy tons of blank tape blank sony blank maxell <laughs> and there were news groups in the early days of the internet and i was right. trading tapes with everybody on the internet <laughs> and they had their lists of movies i had my lists of movies and i was constantly you know priority i was shipping stuff out <laughs> I would say, listen, okay, you got these three movies I want to see. Can you put these three movies, do EP speed, put three movies on one tape? I'll do, I'll put two of these movies on my tape. <laughs> That's how we did it. So I was at, I was seeing movies that were uh, were legitimately unavailable, legitimately. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, that was the only way I, I would see a third generation copy of a movie. Like looking for Mr. Goodbar, which is still unavailable. Wow, yeah, that's okay. right. Okay, yeah. Looking for Mr. Goodbar, I mean, I think it was on VHS. Somebody, okay, I, but I, I, it's a third generation, so the movie looks like you're you're watch you're watching it, and it's like under under you know muddy water, <laughs> but at least you're seeing the movie. Right. So now, I know. To, to, I, I miss those days. Do you, and then, uh, yeah. Do you still have those tapes or, at this point, or if you've replaced them by Blu-rays or DVDs? No, no, they're, they're all in the garbage. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm curious if you kept them just yeah. for nostalgia's sake and say, but oh, here's something frustrating, though, I will say about that. Some things that came out on VHS, you know, would have, like, a different thing that wasn't on the later Blu-ray or DVD, you know, and I can think of a couple of examples, like, and it's just minor things, but, like, the cartoon A Man Called Flintstone, uh, they have uh, Wilma Flintstone holding the torch up on the Columbia logo on the tape. But wow. if you go to the DVD, well, Warner's has acquired it, so you can't have a Columbia logo on right. there, even though it's Wilma. So it's cut off, and you never see it anymore. You can find it on YouTube, but it just sucks because it's not on the DVD. Exactly. <laughs> and so I mean, sometimes I, you have to keep these old tapes just for that stupid reason. <laughs> absolutely, or sometimes... Uh, the music rights. Yeah. And yeah. That, 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 that's what that's what, that's the bone of contention on many of these uh, fights to yeah. get stuff released. The, the, it all comes down to the lawyers. Yeah. So a version on VHS may not be the same as a version on DVD and Blu-ray because maybe maybe a classic song was played. Right. And, you, and those rights, you know. Yeah. Well, you can blame Peggy Lee and you can blame Howard Kalen of the Turtles for that. You know, they, they went through their own lawsuits and won, and that's why we have a lot of those music rights issues. I mean, I love Howard Kalen and the Turtles, but 
I'm annoyed with him for that because he gloats in his book. He's like, ah, I won. We, we, you know, now everybody has to check for a new format. They has to clear it through me. And it's like, uh, you know, it's like if it Absolutely. came out originally with the music, it should be uh, on every future version. You know, sorry, that was the film that was made. You know, it's like. But the, yeah, to this day, there's tons of stuff that that was on VH. It's not. It just hasn't been released. Yeah. Like looking for Mr. Goodbar. I mean, it could come down to the, you know, music. There's a lot of stuff that's still unavailable. Yeah. Or it's just annoying stuff like you'll buy old episodes of Laverne and Shirley and like a scene that you thought was funny or Odd Couple or something that was funny, but because of the music rights, they cut it out and it's like you lost 10 minutes of the show and it's like, what? You know? Right. That's why, uh, like, most of those old music shows, like Shindig and Hullabaloo, well, Hullabaloo. Hullabaloo has some of the shows were released briefly on DVD, but that's like when you go to these conventions, that's a lot of the bootlegs. Yeah. All those yeah. music shows, those fantastic, you know, on the, the 60s, because it comes down to the music rights. Yeah. So they can't be legitimately released. Like, it was amazing that they were able to release the first five years of Saturday Night Live. Yeah. It yeah. all because of the music. They were able to clear the music. They paid off the people. And that's, that's why they stopped, though. Yeah. You know, they can't continue, like, I want to see like those early, the early '80s of, of SNL, but yeah. you can't because the music's so expensive. Yeah, I could handle it if they had the shows without the music, if they really had to do it. But you know, it's like after you get to about season 17 on SNL, it's like stop already. <laughs> you know, whenever Adam Sandler came in, that's where I drop out. You know, it's like people go, "Oh, F- Will Ferrell." Ah, fuck Will Ferrell. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Really, fuck Will Ferrell, please. <laughs> Funny briefly, like well, we got no one, we got no one. So I, I, I'm always look, I'm always nostalgic. I'm, I'm nostalgic more and more. I, and yeah. I, I was always going crazy for Rhino Records and Rhino Video. They yeah. were really now, they a lot of that has become Shout Factory. Yeah, and they were really the source for all the old commercials, trailers, <laughs> sitcoms. I mean, I was really going crazy with cartoons back in the day. I wanted to see all the rare stuff. Yeah. You know, I wanted to see Lucy and Ricky smoking those commercials. Yes. This is before YouTube, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have some tape, and it probably was Good Times, or it might have been White Star, or one of those other minor labels, you know, Gold Star, or whatever they had. You know, and it's like, um, yeah, there was celebrity commercials, and it's like, you know, it was the first time I saw a lot of that stuff. Uh, you know, Lucy and Desi smoking, or uh, the Three Stooges simonizing the car, or... Uh, right. You know, Marilyn Monroe uh, in some sort of oil commercial or something. I don't remember what, you know, fill it up with Texaco. I don't know what she was doing. You know, but it's like, yeah. wow, I didn't know they had all these celebrity commercials. You know, now it's probably pretty easy to find. But back then, I was in heaven when I ever discovered stuff like that. But, you know, the, the hunt for the rare stuff goes on and on. So yeah. if you see something on YouTube that's old and oh, yeah. amazing, I advise everyone to download it ASAP oh, because yeah. chances are one night they'll take it down. Well, I know one now. I mean, uh, literally today, in 1971, uh, was the first airing of Harry Nielsen's The Point. And wow. I, I, I don't know if you know the history behind it, but the original narrator was Dustin Hoffman. But yes. he, and but he only contracted to uh, have his narration appear once. So they had Alan Barsman and I think Alan Thicke, and then Ringo did it for the video. And uh, but they had the Dustin Hoffman version on YouTube for a while. It's not there now. And I oh. downloaded it in a heartbeat. I said, "Oh my God, the Dustin Hoffman version!" Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Good for you. Yeah, man. Like all the rare stuff, like. Yeah, yeah, it still goes on and on. There's like tons of rare stuff out there, yeah. and it's it, it, I'm always amazed by the stuff uploaded from from these angels out there that got yeah. this footage. But I you gotta download it right away. And then I don't understand this. It's like um, to me, if I had a like the Warner Archives vault or any of these supposed vaults where they keep all their things. If I had, like, any movie that had, like, say, I'll make it up, John Wayne or Marilyn Monroe, I'm sure all their stuff is out, but any scene possible, I would get that out on video. And it's like, it just amazes right. me that, you know, we mentioned Jerry Lewis. There are Jerry Lewis movies that are not on video to this day. 
and it's like they might have come out on tape but i don't count that you know and it's like they're not on dvd and it's like i thought oh, when he died i thought oh good now they'll all come out and it's like man they're rarer than the day the clown cried it's like uh, exactly. Why can't we get Three Ring Circus, the one Dean Martin Jerry Lewis movie? Now, again, I got that off of YouTube and downloaded it. It might still be there, but it has Russian subtitles on it. <laughs> yeah. That's why I think it's more, I think it's imperative to buy this stuff when it comes out. Yeah. Because if, every, if streaming is the future, there's going to be less and less variety. Yeah. Because these sons of bitches will lock everything up. They yeah. don't care. Do you remember how long it took to get the Batman series oh, yeah. released? Oh, yeah. It took decades. And I had bootlegs decades. of it. I had bootlegs right. of it. I had it on tape right. and then I had it on DVD. I figured this thing's never going to come out. <laughs> you know, so and then when it, it came out, yeah. listen up, Warner's. When it actually came out, I did buy the legit releases. So there, you exactly. Know. <laughs> but it's just pure greed. They just like to sit on this footage, and it's just rotting away in the vaults. I mean, really, why not just release it? They they don't care. They just uh, I don't know. Like like all those Johnny Carson shows. Like, oh, yeah. what are they doing? What is that? <laughs> but basically, I don't know. The, there should be a channel. The Johnny Carson channel. Yeah. You pick the app. I mean, all that footage is just rotting away. Yeah. Just upload everything and make it available to the people. Fine. Yeah. Pay ten dollars a month, twenty dollars a month. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, the Johnny Carson channel. Well, I even thought that back then. I mean, uh, when MTV first started. I watched it at the beginning, and immediately my wheels were turning, and I thought of ideas that actually came true. I said, they got to do a station that plays all cartoons. Eventually they did, but there was skepticism about this. They go, what? You right. can't play cartoons over and over. It's like, why? Right. They've been playing cartoons over and over every weekend for Saturday morning for 30 years. Why can't they do it every day? <laughs> you know? right. and, and, and then it made me think, why isn't there a Star Trek channel and an I Love Lucy channel? And, exactly. I, you know, it's like, you can just play all Lucy all the time. You can even put Life with Lucy on there, you know? My, my dream is I wish there was a 24-hour Jerry Lewis telethon <laughs> channel. Because all that footage still exists, yes. most of it. Yeah. And this is, it's hundreds of hours of insanity. And it just, it's just rotting away. Can't we look at And you, we, we could do, like, for, for a good purpose. I mean, you could put that number yeah. at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> you could raise money throughout the year. Yeah. But there's always so. some asshole. I mean, I get this when I do my books. Um, like, I'm trying to get a book, and I shouldn't say too much about it, but um, a book about uh, Sick Magazine, which was, uh, like, a mad knockoff. But the people that are holding the rights, they want their share. And so wow. it's it's going through legal hassles that way. I'll leave it at that without uh, going into two. You know, it's like this stuff is sixty years old. Nobody gives a shit. You know, it's like we do because we'd like to see it. But I mean, it's like somebody's sitting on the telephone saying, "Well, I'm going to make my money someday on this." And it's like, no, you're not. You know, it's just aging yeah. crap and sitting in your vault. Put it on the air. Put it on YouTube. Put it on TV. That's like that's their only that's their reason for for being alive just yeah. to bother people they don't even care about this shit but they know that people are <laughs> begging to see it i hear this over and over again you know with the commentaries like like the, the somebody who owns the rights to such and such a film like he doesn't give a shit about the film right but he's just he just wants the money they want the money yeah now some people get it like uh uh Pathé news service in in england Yes. They just uh, restored and uploaded everything to the internet. They said, you know, this is historical stuff. Let's just put it out there. And that's how right. other people should be. You know, it's like, what? why are you holding on to it? Why are you sitting there? I mean, there should be a movie tone channel. There should be, you know, it's like, yes. <laughs> you know, just all that stuff, just available, you know? I, I mean, and, and, and it's needed more than ever because television, like the movies, is just straight. I mean, I know they're making, like, Television is supposed to be in a new golden age, yeah. but I don't even watch TV. I don't even watch television anymore. Yeah. If I hear a show is really good, I'll just wait and I'll buy it on Blu-ray and give it a <laughs> chance. But I'm not paying for this fucking television nowadays. Yeah. It's just abominable. I mean, we didn't have many channels growing up, but we had enough. Yeah. We had we had enough. Yeah. Now you got you get 800 channels, pure shit. Yeah. Pure mean spirited shit. All we have left, I would say, Turner, Turner Classic Movies. That's like the only channel, man. Look, yeah. they ruined the fucking Weather Channel. How do you ruin the fucking Weather Channel? <laughs> they ruined the Weather Channel. It's a simple formula. 
No, they fuck around with it. <laughs> well, even MTV. I mean, I love the glory days where they just showed yes. videos. And then I could kind of handle Beavis and Butthead because they were making fun of the videos. And then they started the real world, which is like the beginning of the end. And they said, and that's what we have now, all these stupid reality oh, shows. And it's God, like, I, I mean, I, I just want to see Yo! MTV Rubs. I don't want to see a show about a fucking whore who has eight kids with nine different guys. Yeah. Who gives a shit? I mean, I would love it if MTV just went back and just so, showed videos. Heck, they could just show the 80s videos. Just show Duran Duran and Flock of Seagulls all day long. Yes, I think, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, you know, I just want to see, you know, let's go, let's see, uh, whatever, Land of Confusion, I want to see Genesis videos, whatever, <laughs> I'd rather see that than yeah. the shit they're showing today. Yeah, that's amazing, you know. <laughs> and but you know, they dumbed down, they've dumbed down the kids so bad, they've made it so, they, they've made it so easy to manipulate them and feed them this shit. Yeah. They don't even realize it's shit. Yeah. Well, we they have do. nothing to go Good. back on. I mean, it's like, right. yeah. We I do. We you and I can go back and right. say, I remember when there was three channels. You know, now we sound like we're. I remember when. You know? Yeah, but it's not, it's not because we're older. Because it, it's really, it's really horrific nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just amazing to me, uh, you know, another thing that popped up in my, ha my head was, um, and you probably know this, most people don't, but, you know, uh, somebody was on Facebook saying, is there a DVD out there with the Pete Smith specialties? And, Aww. you know, and it's like I'm saying, now, in the old days on TV, in the 50s and 60s, and even up to the 80s, you know, it's like, I worked in TV briefly, and they would get these movie packages together. They put all the Tarzan movies together and put sell that as a package. So they, yeah. You know, they try to find whatever old shit was in their vault and say, okay, you know. So you know, it seems like it was so easy just to do that back then. And then now it's like, oh, that's so hard. Oh, we should probably remaster it before we put it out. No, just put it out. It doesn't uh, matter. You know. Well, you know, Warner Archive is really a treasure trove. Yeah. If you go there, they they have put a ton of rare stuff. Yeah. On DVD. You they've, know. They've done really well, but they still have a few quirks that annoy me. It's like, like, I finally went the bootleg route on this a few years ago. Is um, I always thought. Put out the complete Looney Tunes, all 1,000, oh, in one box it. set. I said, I'll yeah. pay $1,000 for it, so it's a dollar right. a cartoon. I don't care. It's all of them. Cold Black, everything. Bugs Bunny, Nips and Nips, everything. Um, still has never come out, and about only a third of all the Looney Tunes are out. And right. it's like, these are the greatest cartoons ever made, and well, they don't I mean, care. They're like, oh, we're going to offend somebody if we show a black guy with big lips and a, a ring through his nose. I know. I and know. so... So and, I mean, it's not it's not just greed. It's it's not just music rights. It's the fucking PC Nazis that are running this planet now. <laughs> I mean, they don't give a fuck that it's a, that these are historical artifacts. They they were made from in a different fucking era mm -hmm. by people who didn't know better. But it is history. Yeah, it is history. I mean, it's 2019, and Song of the South is not available. Right, you've got to be fucking kidding me. You've got to be I mean, Tribe of the Will is available, but yeah. not Song of the South. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> it, I mean, and, the, and it's horrible because the kids are going to suffer because these yeah. kids don't know who, who yeah. the fuck is Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Who is Bugs Bunny? Yeah. That stuff is almost erased yeah. from our, our cultural memory. Yeah. And so I finally went the bootleg route and got all of them. I watched them. I was I, I determined to watch them all. It took me about two years to watch them all, just a little at a time, and because I said I want to see every Looney Tunes ever made. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and uh, I've seen a lot of those really, ins I mean, jaw dropping <laughs> yes. stuff. Yeah. But I mean, it should be remastered and restored. Of course. I mean, even Col Cole Black and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah. One of those most vile pieces. <laughs> it's, it's insanely racist. Yeah. But th does that mean you should destroy it? Well, it's no. weird because it's also yeah, revered yeah. as one of the best pieces of animation it's, ever yeah, made. It's it like, it uh, yeah. so, I mean, here's what you do: you get fucking leather molds and to do uh, an introduction, yeah. tell people what's what, yeah. and then you just show it. Yeah. Well, I even said that for years. Just put Whoopi on there saying, "This is okay. Watch it." <laughs> exactly. I mean, Amos and Andy. 
Yes. The radio show was racist, but the yes. television sitcom is one of the greatest sitcoms ever. Yes. And even that is not legitimately available. Yeah. And that one was it's even incredible. already censored before I was born. I was born in 66. I think they took it off, like in 65 or something. And I was like, aww. <laughs> That went away, and so and the little rascals, the little rascals yeah. was you know, deemed racist. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff is unavailable. Yeah, I mean, I remember seeing some of those. Some of those things creeped into the seventies. So I remember yum yum meet them up. But later on, you never saw that one ever. You know, right? So I mean, I mean, seventies and eighties, and even early nineties, there was there was much more freedom yeah. on television. Yeah. Now it's so homogenized. Yeah, well, there's nudity on television. You know, it's like. I tell people that, yeah, there was nudity. I'm sure there was stations in the East Coast there, you know, that just showed, you know, Hammer films without censorship because they did that here, you know. It's like. But, but yeah. I mean, now there's just a concerted effort to turn everybody into thin skinned babies. <sighs> and when I was a kid, they just showed anything, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, y y uh, even in that, you know, we mentioned Saturday Night Live. Look at the Hugh Hefner episode. There's nudity on it, you know, right on the wow. network television. Oh, my God. Why didn't they take him off the air and run him into prison or whatever? You know, it's like, jeez. Man, I don't know. So the bootlegs are still out there. Yeah. Keep searching the bootlegs because it's out there. <laughs> and I would say, I would say bootlegs are still worth buying because yeah. you can, I mean, you can't like you can't do that on television. One of the greatest shows ever. Oh yeah, on Nickelodeon. Oh, love That's that unavailable. Show. It's unavailable. <sighs> so if you go to a convention and see the complete series, buy it because mm -hmm. even if it's uploaded, it'll be taken down. Yeah. Yeah, there's always stupid rights. I mean, I follow the cartoons and stuff, and then, you know, we mentioned the Warner Archives. They put out, like, every Hanna-Barbera show, even the worst shit ever. But you will never see the Fantastic Four because the Mighty Marvel and Disney owns that one, so they yeah. won't put it out yeah. because it was Hanna-Barbera, which Warner uh, Brothers owns. It's like, make a joint deal, put the thing out. You know, who cares? You know, I don't know, but you know what? I give it time, everything will be released, even for a brief time. Everything, yeah. well, not not those music. Sh I, when it comes to music rights, forget about it. But yeah. it's like, if, whatever. It's like wrestling a dragon with these guys who owns the, who own the rights. Well, um, when the music rights you know clears up, you know, if everything's in public domain, we'll be long gone. It'll be two hundred years from now or something. And, peop and people <laughs> won't care. It's just no. getting worse. And people's memories are just shot. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, since you're talking about you know still buy stuff on VHS, and I'm sure there's tons, but I mean, is there like a wish list or a want list that you have of films that you just are dying to see that just after? 30, 40 years of collecting, you still don't see them. What are you looking for? Well, come on, everybody. The Holy Grail is the day the clown cries. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, that is the Holy Grail. Yeah. And give it time. Yes. Give it time. His fucking family, they're sitting on their asses right now. But give it 10, 20 years for a quick buck. They'll release that fucking film. <laughs> you will see it, mark my words, yeah. but they're just, that's really, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, I've heard it's not really that great, but it's No, just, I mean, I was it's just a, talking. It's, it's a wrong movie. Yes. And there are lots of wrong movies. <laughs> I was talking on another podcast about this, and it's like, I said this just general statement, and the guy agreed with me, and he's like, is that it's probably like which way to the front. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so. Yeah, that's another. That's another episode. He really was one of the greatest bad men ever. Yeah. Oh mean, my God! Perkadan didn't help Jerry Lewis's career. Let's put it that way. And right. You know, I always think about you know, and he doesn't say this in his memoir, but he does say that he it was going to kill himself with a gun in '73. And I said. Maybe it was because the day the clown cried came out as a piece of shit. <laughs> oh my god, he had one of the craziest like like he didn't, he, there were two years in the seventies that he didn't he couldn't even remember remember because his mind was so shot. Right. <laughs> well, you know what I have on VHS slapstick of another kind. Oh wow, that is pretty rare. <laughs> it was just pure evil. That hasn't been released on DVD or, or Blu-ray, so sometimes it's worth if you see these old VHS tapes, pick them up. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other films. Um, well, have you seen the Jerry Lewis films? It's in the Jerry Lewis films book. Is he did a couple films for France? Yes. 
are they any good? <laughs> are they just pieces of shit like you know what? any of his Even later? In France, and I've seen snippets of these movies. They're sit- basically they're just licking his ass, <laughs> and he's just basically that's all these movies are about. Isn't he the greatest thing since Jesus Christ? Yeah. Let's lick his ass. Yeah. Meanwhile, over here, no one gave a shit about him until Scorsese. Right. But then he had he had the, he, he had those comeback movies. Yeah. Was it Cracking Up and Smorgasbord? Yeah, well, it's the same movie, but yeah, and then. Oh yeah, that's the same movie. But what's the what's the there was uh, another one. Hardly Working. Hardly Working. <laughs> yes. Which I'd love to see on video. You know, I saw it back then. You know, and the only scene I remember is when he's opening the can of juice in the bar or something, and he pours yes. the whole thing. But I don't remember anything else. And he has the big buck teeth and everything. And it's like good, good I'm non-PC sorry. stuff from Jerry I'm Lewis. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that made me laugh. That, 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 I remember renting it. It was on VHS. I'm cracking up. What's the one with Herb Edelman? He's a psychiatrist. That, that, yeah, that's, that's cracking up. up. Yeah, which was that's cracking smorgasbord up. originally. Oh, but, you know, with those movies, it was funny to Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's part of the appeal. Jerry yeah. Lewis does stuff that's funny to him. And he is the lord of cringes. Yes. He made a ton of stuff that's just cringeworthy, but because it's cringeworthy, <laughs> that's what makes it funny. Yeah. What kind of sick bastard thinks this is funny? <laughs> okay, the floor is waxy. It's slippery. Let me let me slip on the floor for seven minutes, not stop. And he will do that. He'll announce that he will do it for seven minutes. Hold on. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> with your father but in my case my dad and I have very similar tastes in a lot of movies which helped me growing up because he introduced me to a lot of stuff but there's certain things like I love Jerry Lewis even though I know he's cringeworthy he's an asshole and everything like that but my dad never understood it he says why do you like Jerry Lewis he might have been good when he was with Dean Martin but certainly (laughs) none of his solo and it's like because He's fascinating to watch. There's something yes. weird about him, you know. It's like there is, he is psychotic. <laughs> he is he is a mad clown. He is that evil clown. <laughs> he was he was first of all he was unapologetic. Okay, he was a he was just a flamethrower of a human being. Uh-huh. There are zillions of insane Jerry Lewis stories, and trust me, yeah. now that he's dead, you're going to find out stuff that oh, is going to yeah. make you go crazy. <laughs> you must read that book, everybody. By uh, it's called The King of Comedy. By uh, his last name is Levy. Okay, I don't even okay. know if I read that one, but okay. You you will go crazy. <laughs> they, the guy tried to do a bio- an authorized biography of Jerry Lewis. Uh-huh. At the end of the book, Jerry throws him out his yacht. And that's like the end of the book. But this book is full of lunacy. <laughs> like one night, Jerry Lewis was in Miami Beach, and uh, the audience was really bad. So he went back to his room and got drunk. Yeah. And he cracked the bottle of liquor uh, against the wall and broke it. And then he tried. He said, I christened this hotel uh, the the USS Motherfucker. And he <laughs> lit the wall on fire. He almost burned the fucking place down. <laughs> <laughs> I even like mild things that actually appear on YouTube. Like you, you probably have seen this. It's like where uh, this kid comes up, Jerry's doing a personal appearance, and says, "I can imitate you." And he goes, "Really?" And he hands him the microphone, and the kid goes, "When you walk," and oh, then he yes, pulls, yes. he whips that mic out of his hand. It's yes. fa- you know, he pulls his hand off. You know, it's, he yes. whips it out so fast, yes. and he says, "Thank oh, you. Oh, Get oh, out of here." No, you know? no, 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 no. He lectures the guy. That. I can't watch that video, man. I can't watch it. Because he, Jerry says, you have just been in an accident. You have just been in a train wreck. He berates the guy in front of thousands of people. You just stepped on the third rail. You can imitate me, but you can't sing that song. And it's that like it's not even a song. song. It's a song from Carousel. That is, well, I care about the kids. These fucking kids. And I, I never understood that. I don't know. It's like he says, you'll never walk alone. What? You always will need a wheelchair? What? You know, it's like that's what I always thought with that song, even no. as a kid. <laughs> Jerry Lewis, man. He cares about handicapped children. Meanwhile, his own fucking kids hate his fucking guts. <laughs> He beat the shit out of his kids, man. 
<laughs> well, he got his revenge. He took him out of the well. Ha! <laughs> That's right, you motherfuckers! I'll beat the shit out of you! <laughs> Like, I thought Jerry Lewis was going to die in 1983 because he used to do the shtick where he'd light the lighter and it'd have a 10 inch right. flame and, you know, you know. Well, the, and, the, the, and then he had a heart attack and, like, a, a quintuple bypass. Jerry, and I said, listen, he's a goner. And then he Jerry, comes back. Yeah. And then he gets that uh, other heart problem where he has to take the, the steroids yeah, or something and he gets to be a 8,000 pounds. It's like, how does yeah. he survive that? And then he loses the weight and he's still it's going. Like, it's like Satan made him live longer and longer. <laughs> he, he dodged, he dodged so many bullets. You need to see the Ichu Hollywood story about Jerry. He dodged so many bullets. I'll never forget when I saw him. He was like a whale. I couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, this guy has had one hell of a life. <laughs> and one thing that is on YouTube, which is a great thing if they haven't taken it down, is where they, the, you know, he is singing You'll Never Walk Alone with little clips every year from like 76 to the end, you know, and it's like you see him gaining the weight and then he loses it <laughs> and then he grows a third tail and then he's like, you know, it's like, what is going on with this guy? You know, and then oh, he's yeah. like this shriveled old man at the end and he kind of wobbles off and I go, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just, that is, we, we love the freak show. Yes. He's just, it is one of the greatest freak shows ever and I love that. He doesn't give a fuck about your feelings. He doesn't care. This is a telethon for for handicapped children, and he called somebody a fag. <laughs> and then he took, there's one clip he talks about his porno collection. What the fuck, man? We're raising money for little kids, you motherfucker. I'm Jerry Lewis. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm like Chaplin. I know because the friendship sound like Chaplin. So, I can say, I have carte blanche. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> Dean! Dean, come back! No, Dean Martin was a, one of the smartest men on this planet. Dean Martin should have got a Nobel Peace Prize to put up with this fucking... I was going to say, for breaking up with that. Oh, my God, a fucking monkey on PCP. It's man. like I can finally have a hit record. Yeah. I can finally crazy. start a proper movie career. You know, it's like... Fucking Jew bastard, I'm out of here, you motherfucker. <laughs> I'm sorry, come back, the it's amazing oh to me. Fuck. It's amazing to me that people predicted, oh, Dean Martin, his career's over without Jerry Lewis. It's like, and then, oh man, the, the, it was beautiful because Jerry's career collapsed and Dino's career soared. Yeah, I have the variety show. Yeah, I have the movies. Yeah, it's Lewis, anything but... Dean touched, it was successful. You know, it's like yeah. Jerry would try to do a talk show it last thirteen weeks, and meanwhile, oh. Dean's on there. I'm on. I'm on your eight, I'm on your nine, I'm on your ten. <laughs> right. And like like the, Dean had the rat pack and Jerry tried uh, Jerry wanted to be cool with no one. <laughs> There's one clip he goes on Carson. Yeah. And Carson tells Jerry Lewis, nobody likes you. <laughs> I always have this impression of the Rat Pack. It's like they're playing poker or something, uh, and, you know, smoking cigars, and there's this knock on the door. Frank, let me in! Frank! You know, it's yeah, like, you know, sorry, Jerry, can't let you in. You know, Dino's here. You know? you know what Frank Sinatra called Jerry Lewis? <laughs> Chew. <laughs> Tony Curtis. 
artist. Like, he yeah. They don't give a shit. Yeah. And it is amazing. You, you you said on Phil's show, it's like, you know, or he said, it's just like they did a movie together, Boeing, Boeing. And it's kind of sad that Tony Curtis came off as funnier than Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it's just a train wreck. You can't, you can't look away, though. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, and, wow. and it, even now, it's hard to believe Jerry's dead. I always think he's going to come back. It's like, surprise! <laughs> I faked my death just for you. <laughs> I'm gonna live for a hundred, like I said I would. <laughs> why? Why? I cheated on my wife. That Who gives a shit? <coughs> That's another story. Like Jerry Lewis, like he created a he created like a bachelor pad. Right. And meanwhile, he was married to his wife. He created a bachelor pad and was banging broads. <laughs> His wife divorced his and then there's a clip of him talking about religion. <laughs> I wonder if, like, <laughs> I, I wonder if Jerry acted different around women <laughs> when he was alone with them. Because either Jerry, because he's dual his duality was would be totally annoying to me if a woman was like this, either that blah 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 or Well you see, um <laughs> I think right now we'll be undressing and taking our clothes off. You know, that type oh, of and remember, Jerry Lewis always has a phantom lozenge in his mouth. <laughs> Whenever he's talking, he has, he has a lozenge. A lozenge. lozenge. And he's an, expert, he's an expert on everything. You know, I created video assist. You know? <laughs> I told Frank sure Tashler, you, no. you can shut the fuck up. I don't need you. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> You know, these kids today, they need a good whipping, you know, because I'm like chaplain, and if I want to jerk off on these bitches at my house, my kids should shut up, you know, because I know what I'm talking about. I'm a persecuted man. I'm trying to do this to save lives. We are saving lives, ladies and gentlemen. Get on the phone. There's one clip where, you know, everybody's doing cocaine. Take that money for cocaine and right. give it to the kids. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of mind does that work? <clears throat> yeah, there's two Jerry Lewis appearances. I'm sure there's others like this, but they just boggle my mind. One, and it's just because out, so how, out of step or just his own world he was always in. Uh, if you see the yes. Jack Benny birthday special that came out 50 years ago this month, uh... You know, everybody does their little cameo. Even Lawrence Welk comes out and actually is pretty funny. And then Jerry does his, and it's like the laughter stops. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's on YouTube. Watch it. It's like, you know, everybody's like, hey, Jack, it's great. And, you know, Dan wow. Blocker comes in there and says oh. some jokes. Don, Don Wilson comes on there. They all trade stick, hey. stick with Jack, and Jack does his typical well, you know, and all that stuff. And then Jerry comes out, and, and Jack tries. He goes, oh, hi, Jerry. You know, and it's like, and then Jerry just does, like, kind of his weird, kind of semi-serious Jerry, and it's like, right. uh, get off the stage. You know, if I was Jack <laughs> Benny, I would have said that. <laughs> but Jack was too nice. Jack would never say that. You know, Jerry Lewis was a dropout. You know, he punched out his principal. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> so, but w I say that because Jerry Lewis, just watch any interview with him. Yeah. He is one eloquent <laughs> lunatic. Yes. <laughs> and and it's, it's just fascinating. Yeah. I mean, occasionally he had little bits of brilliance, which I love. It was like if you find, like, the clip in the 80s with uh, Letterman, and he, he says, can you do a lady? And he goes, lady! Like that, and it's like... Oh, wow, he can turn it on like that, but most of the time he has it off, you know, it's like... <laughs> right, it's just, it's, it's, it, you cringe. And you know, I went to, I went to go see him, like, uh, six, seven years before he died. He was nearby, and I caught one of his shows, and basically he comes out, he does the most politically incorrect jokes, <laughs> tired jokes, jokes that died 60 years ago. He's doing these jokes, and then he shows clips. <laughs> <sighs> and now, and then, the last hour of the show was the worst Q&A session I ever witnessed in my life. <laughs> Every fan came.
came up to the microphone and he shot them down. <laughs> Jerry, can you sing a song? No. Next question. No. So, Jerry, I love you. Okay. He said to the audience, I know, I know you all love me. Don't come up to the microphone and tell me that. Just get to your question so we can get out of here. <laughs> Some lady was crying, Jerry, I love you. And he called her Broderick Crawford. He said, you look like Broderick Crawford. Wow. <laughs> who the fuck does, who insults the audience like that? I mean, not like, even Don Rickles would soften the blow. No, Jerry would insult people that came to see him. There's a great article online called Jerry Lewis is Alive and It's Still an Asshole. Well, yeah. And that's what it's called. And it was written by a guy who went to one of his shows. You have to read this. What He, he would put the audience in a meat grinder. Like, <laughs> he, like, he, just, he would insult everybody and everything. <laughs> Jeremy, can you talk about your family? Uh, next question. I'm not going to discuss my family. So uh, for one hour, I was cringing, cringing, cringing. I just wa I wanted to stay, but I wanted to leave. I almost went up to the microphone and I said, fuck this. He's going to shoot me. I'm going back to my I was going to ask, did you bother to ask a question? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, because uh, he, he sent me an autograph photo. That's and I just want to keep that memory. Like, he liked me. Like, <laughs> I don't want to remember that. Totally. <laughs> Sit down, you greasy mother. Motherfucker, just <laughs> <Cheers of> shit. <laughs> I mean, these people paid fifty hundred dollars, huh. and Jerry Lewis is pissing on everybody. Wow. And then he did the announcer's test. You know, the announcer's test. He reads off two swans, three boiled eggs, four, four horses. Right, right. Like, and then he said, "Okay, thank you, good night." Well, did he finish it? <laughs> That's all I remember the it. Tibetan memory <laughs> tricks. <laughs> he did it. Okay. Yeah, he could I mean, he was a genius, but this guy had a vicious mean streak. Uh, it was like walking through a minefield. Hmm. Like you didn't know what would set him off. That's why the, the Nutty Professor is like almost the Jerry Lewis film. Yep. He did have a Jekyll Hyde personality. Yeah, yeah. He was bipolar. He was all over the place. You never knew what Jerry Lewis you would see in the next second. Yeah, and Buddy you know, Love so certainly was future greasy hair Jerry. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, because he pretty much kept his hair not greasy too much. Uh, in his 50s oh, and man. 60s movies, it was more of a buzz cut, except maybe later on. But then in the 80s, all those slimy uh, oh. king of comedy, you know, I comb my hair with buttered toast type films. <laughs> and the tan, he always had the tan. And the, the pinky ring! Yes. The pinky ring! Yeah. And kind of the swagger walk. It's like. Right, yeah. I'm a goomba, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you must feel insulted. <laughs> <laughs> Jew. Uh, <laughs> what's going on, Jew? <laughs> uh, that's another Jekyll Hyde by Sinatra. That's another episode. That's, that's another. Yes. Episode. I was like, that's not well, getting to Sinatra. These motherfuckers no. needed Xanax, man. They needed some. I mean, they were all over the place. <laughs> Uh, I ain't talking to Mia anymore. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm married Mia Farrow. Fucking bitch cut her hair. Yeah. She wants to be in Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> I made that bitch go flying. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you get in the kitchen, you accept my seed. You're the mother of my children. You ain't gonna be no fucking Rosemary's Baby. I'm Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Hmm. 
Get upstairs and get naked. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, well, where do we go from here? Okay, we went from the Invisible Man to VHS to Jerry Lewis to now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on anymore. That's why, that's why it's good to look back. Yes. It's good yes. to be nostalgic more than ever. Please, don't watch the news. Don't watch television. Don't go to the movies. Just go watch Ernie Kovacs, baby. Yes. Let's look back. Let's go to the... Remember, 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 remember. And if remember. anybody out here listening says, who's Ernie Kovacs? First of all, you're an idiot. Second of all, it's easier than ever to Google something now. So you right. never, ever have to say who's fill in the blank. You can look them up. You know, when somebody dies, if I'm not sure who they are, like, you know, Dick Miller passed away recently. I wasn't yeah. sure, and then once I looked him up, oh, that guy, you know, and it's that like, guy. you know, you know, <laughs> and, right. you know, so yeah, it's yeah. like, even I don't know everybody by name, and but the, sometimes it's like I just need the little refresher course, and I go, oh, yeah, he was in Bucket of Blood, and so, yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I mean, more than ever, we have all this information at our fingertips. Yeah. And, yeah, we have a lot of people that just want to focus on, Stuff from 10, 15 years ago. And I'm saying to everybody, go further back. Go further back. Yeah. Because you're going to, you're, there's so many diamonds. And also, you find things like, you know, I, I'm sure you remember the Motown 25th anniversary show where Michael Jackson did yes. the moonwalk. And everybody yes. said, oh, Michael Jackson created the moonwalk. It's like, no, he didn't. They were doing that in old films in the 30s, all these black artists doing that crazy oh, walk, yeah. you know? And it's like, but nobody d d does the research, so they go, Michael Jackson created the moonwalk, you know? It's like. Exactly. Uh, I mean, it's easier now to check the facts. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's Wikipedia. You can check the facts. You know, you know people. People don't have any more time. You know, they're, they're, they're too busy on their own yeah. flying carpet. They're in their own world. Yeah, just have their head bent, bent down looking at their smartphone all day, getting neck injury. You know? Oh, I know, I know. It's really bad. It's it's really, really bad. I mean, if you're going to look at your phone, it'll, it'll go look at, like, yeah, Abel Sitka. <laughs> <laughs> look at the old times, yes. baby, the old times. I, just, I don't care about the... The, the, the pseudo celebrities of today. Yes. The, nowadays, anybody can be famous. Really, yeah. it's getting. They're making any stupid piece of shit famous nowadays. <laughs> any dumb fucker, any cunt becomes famous now. When we were kids, yeah. you had to do something major, major yeah. to be famous. <laughs> now you think now any slob and any any stupid bitch becomes famous, and it's sad because like I mean it, they're dumbing down. Kids don't know what fa fame is not what it once was, my right. friends. Right. And you take it to a new level, which I really appreciate. I mean, you love to do multiple po postings about certain celebrities. Some are famous, like, say, Gene Hackman or something. Some are, like, really obscure, like Henry Silva. You'll say, Henry Silva's birthday coming soon, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you'll do 27 yeah, uh, postings. And it's like, holy wow. shit, I didn't even wow. know this much about this man. <laughs> so, I mean, like, years ago, I would go insane on Facebook. And now Facebook is just, it's becoming shit too so some days i don't post anything yeah. some days i go crazy but years ago and it was all about not even about uh like i don't have a lot of friends i like 100 200 it, it's really about celebrating that people yeah. who should be celebrated yeah. I, I i hate to think that people are being forgotten about like i want people to remember jack connor yeah <laughs> and, and i and i i've taken a cue from you i'll give you credit you know it's like i'll try to post things that are a little more obscure and, you know, and uh, people go, I remember this, or most of the time, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know, it's like one day I posted, and now time for a song. And then I posted Chop Suey from Flower Drum song. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> and uh, great. everybody's like, isn't it supposed to be this one? And they posted Chop Suey from System no. of a Down. You know, but it's like, no, no, I mean, you, you need an African-American singing a Chop Suey oh. song with uh, Calypso dancing in it. <laughs> <laughs> too many people, most of the people on Facebook are there to impress other people or to post stuff that might please people. Yeah. And I think that's absolutely an abomination. Yeah. Do what you love. Do yeah. post who you like. Yeah. And you'll oh. be amazed that people people
people go after it. I will say that posting, and I'd seen, I thought I'd seen it, but probably back when it aired, that New Year's Eve thing with Howard Stern and Sherman Hemsley doing Ted dancing and Whoopi Goldberg. I was crying. I said, everybody, if you're hearing this, go YouTube it right now. Howard Stern in blackface. How I started blackface Sherman Hemsley because that clip will be taken down. <laughs> yes, it will. I have to take the, I have to take that footage. I have to get that downloaded because I, you're right. <laughs> and if it's like, anybody did that nowadays, they would be burned to death. <laughs> and Sherman, Sherman, and even Robin were such heroes. For, right. That's what you have to call it. Because, I mean, Sherman could have gotten totally offended and just walked out of the room. I ain't doing this. But he played yeah. along. He was great. You know, and, yes. and even Robin was like, you know, she tried to act offended, but she actually, she was playing along too. You know? Well, you know, it's it's all blistering satire. You know, she yeah. wouldn't have happened to Sherman's career. Yeah. Sherman Hemsley put all his money into Ghost Fever. <laughs> Nobody saw the fucking film. So he had a scrap. He would do anything for money. Yeah. So, okay, I'll be Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> and get fucked by Howard Stern. That poor bastard. <laughs> you, you filthy nigger. <laughs> now I'm going to get my podcast taken off. <laughs> anyway. Oh my God. <laughs> So everybody, go search for the good stuff. Uh, if I can help, if I can help, if Mark can help, that's great. Yeah. Because we want to, we want to, we want to help people discover yeah. the shit worth discovering, yeah. worth celebrating. And there was times, you know, Blazing Saddles is proof of this. There was times right. when you could just do it balls out. <laughs> Dick waving in the well, wind. You could I do don't this. Know. You know. I don't know. I don't know if you could make that movie nowadays. Well, even Mel Brooks <laughs> said he could, and he said, you know, he no. said he might be able to do it without the N word, you know. But it's like, um, I don't know, you know. But there's no movie if you take that out, you know. It's like, right. you know, it's like that's what made it work. It work because right. they were slapping you in the face, saying, "This is fucking racist." Okay. Stop yeah. it. You know, that's really what the the whole point of the movie is, you know. But nowadays yes. it's like, oh, they said the N-word. I can't watch this film. I'm too sensitive. You know, it's like... <laughs> right. And I mean, I mean and that, that kind of uh, thinking makes people weaker. Yeah. That's why I'm really, I'm glad that I was a, I was a little boy watching All in the Family. Yeah. And, you, mean, I, and I'm sure you got the sticks and stones may break my bones and names will never hurt me, you know, when you're a kid. Right. Yeah. Nowadays, they don't ever say that. It's like, oh. Well, <laughs> everything is offensive nowadays. Yes. Everything is a federal case. So you're 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 bullying people into silence. Yes. It is a form of censorship. People yes. can't breathe anymore. People want. I mean, we have more stress than ever. People just want to relax and they want to laugh. Yeah. And now even that is being taken away from us. And I'll be. Over my dead body, man. I'm going to be outrageous. Yeah. I'm sorry. And you definitely do it well. You do it better than me. I, I, I kind of cower a little bit going, oh, shit, what's he doing now? <laughs> but it's realized as I get older, it's like, what are they going to do to me? It's like, you, you know, I've been trying for years to be put in Facebook jail. How many times have you been put in Facebook jail? Oh, fuck Facebook, <laughs> man. Fuck it with, <laughs> fuck it with no lube, man. Fuck it. <laughs> I've given up with Facebook. Uh, I go there because I love my friends and I love celebrating the stuff I do, but yeah. Facebook is run by fucking fascists, man. Yeah, yeah. I believe in free speech. Yes. I believe in... I mean, they're the worst stuff on earth is being posted right now on Facebook. Right. Evil footage. Yeah. People being hurt. Yeah. Animals being hurt. Yeah. And I'm just making jokes. Yeah. And you're not worried. Well, like, what am I, fucking Lenny Bruce? Yeah. You motherfucker, and, and yet you want to be Mr. Morality? Yeah. I mean, get the fuck out of here. Your priorities are out of whack. Yeah. And so it's crazy really because I've had, I've seen people, fr good friends of mine, they'll post a picture that they've painted, and it'll have a painted nipple because it's a painting. Uh-oh. Uh, can't do that. They're in uh -oh. Facebook jail for a month for having uh -oh. a painted nipple on Facebook. Uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah, here's a guy falling off a building to his death. Okay, but don't post a nipple. Don't post a nipple. <laughs> Sick fucks. Uh, I mean, that's how you make serial killers. Really, man, when you teach them a nipple is wrong, but no. a guy getting his, 
head blown off. Oh, that you could post that. Yeah, and Zuckerberg's an idiot, and he, you know, he he has no morals. It's like, why is he so moral about everyone else? I mean, he stole MySpace. He stole the idea blatantly, and then you know he based Facebook on just ranking uh, women at the college at first. So I mean, it was, it was all about sex and all and about. Uh, theft, all at the beginning, and now you can't do any of that. You know? Facebook has no privacy. You spy like fiends on yeah. people. <laughs> everything comes down. Everything comes down to advertising, <sighs> and, and people can't relax. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm standing with comedy. I, so that's yeah. why I'm, I'm, I'm on less and less. Yeah. But I've been blessed. I don't know. It's been a miracle how I found such amazing people. <laughs> well, I only use it, Facebook now. To, to keep in touch with people, to promote right. promote my books, and because I good. now do a podcast, it's like, well, it's a good, good way to promote the podcast, you know, but if, yes. you know, there's no other reason, I'm not going to put, oh, you know, here's a picture of my meal, no, here's something personal that I did today, no, you know, it's like none of that goes up, you know, it's like. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's absolutely, you know, it mm. just. Hopefully, I, I, I don't know. Information wants to be free, <laughs> but the people, you know, the, the uh, powers that be, they're gonna try their best to, you know, hmm. to make us dumber and dumber. And uh, I don't know. Uh, well, on that note, let's kind of wrap this up. Walk um, on, yeah. walk on, <laughs> Give me that mic. <laughs> give me, give me. <laughs> you make me sick. Oh, that's another one. Yeah. yeah. You know, he probably gave that guy brain damage. Oh, boy. I'm like, hey, I got to go back to my trailer. You're, you're the one that showed me that the first time because I was like, why is everybody posting you make me sick? And then I saw the clip. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, the phone wasn't like a little just snap on the head. It was like, you know, neck breaking. You know, it's like, yeah. Ah! That, remember when phones were like the size of cars, man? And he, he kills this guy with this giant phone. And Curtis and almost like, isn't even remorseful. It's like what? it takes him a few beats and then he kind of goes, oh, 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 oh I did I hit you? <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I am concerned. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, uh, before I go on another tangent, uh, do you want people to get in touch with you? With you? I mean, you're no. good a podcast <laughs> guest, but I mean, you're kind of... No! <laughs> no. All right. Yeah, don't contact Anthony. Don't look for him on Facebook. No. Don't pay attention don't to him. <laughs> he no. doesn't exist. Anybody? He doesn't have sausage bread. He doesn't... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Leave him alone. This entire podcast has been an illusion. It's, it's nothing you, you've never heard about me. No. Mark follows me, everybody. You can follow me on Facebook. That's what. Just follow Mark. Mark is the sane one. Who leads you to me? I try to be. Although this podcast may have proven otherwise. The real me showed up. I, I did my Jerry Lewis transformation on this podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. The movie, you know, Roberto Benigni, that fucking kid. He makes a movie in the concentration camp. Everybody gives him awards. I did it first. I made a comedy in the concentration camp. But Benigni didn't do it with grease back hair. Stop. Yeah, I, dipped, I dipped my hair in the Exxon Valdez. I had my hair in the lacquer. <laughs> you know, De Niro, he learned everything from me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Gary Lewis, you know, I made it. Gary career. Lewis. You know, this, this diamond ring doesn't shine for me anymore. That fucking shit. I don't need that shit. I forgot you which. Know, he should have died in Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Oh, it's Jeff Altman, that comedian. He used to do this bit about, you know, what if Gary Lewis used to do a Jerry, you know, if he did the same thing Jerry did, you know, he'd say, this diamond ring, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm going to be, you know, I've been saluted by all the heads of states in Europe, but now I'm going to be in Pink Lady and Jeff. <laughs> Gonna get in the hot tub with these oh, Jerry did you appear know? on there, yes. With these yellow people that we should have killed in the hall. Oh. You know, I'm sensitive, you know. I'm a genius. Okay, I offend everyone, but, you know, I'm just Jerry Lewis. <laughs> you know, these two China girls that came here, we put them in the hot tub. 
<laughs> they didn't know what the fuck was going on. But this is America, you know? We get in the hot tub with Jeff Hall. <laughs> you know, they, when that show ended, they went back to Japan. They never talked to Jeff Holman again. <laughs> That's another episode, my friends. Scary American. Scary American. Scary American. Scary American. <laughs> oh, uh, here, here is Roy Orbison. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, Sid and Marty, man, uh, those guys, uh, they should have been in prison. Oh, That's yeah. another episode. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hash reefer puff and stuff. Okay, I get it. Lidsville. Listen, okay, I get it. Drugs. Okay, come on. <laughs> no, no. Like, Sid and Marty, like, no, nobody did drugs. Yeah, nobody did drugs. Who the <laughs> fuck are you kidding? Nobody did drugs. No, we were all clean, man. We just ate graham crackers and we made those shows. Bullshit! <laughs> All right, let's leave it at this. Yes. And I want to thank you for being my guest today. It's been very amusing. <laughs> this is probably the best, the funniest one I've done. <laughs> and, uh, well, I'll have to have you back again at some point. <laughs> Terrific. All right. Well, thank you very much, Anthony. I'll talk to you soon. All the best. Thank you. Monica. All right. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for listening, and thank you again, Anthony from Facebook, for being my special guest. Episode number 31 will be coming soon. If you would like to comment and or be a guest on this podcast, please drop me a line at funideas.mark at gmail.com. Become a patron of Fun Ideas Productions. If everyone listening just contributed a dollar a month, that would be a tremendous help. Also, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. This has been the Fun Ideas Podcast. This is Mark Arnold speaking. This episode is copyright 2019 Fun Ideas Productions. Thank you very much, and have a good night.